Hello everyone, this is Ready. So in the past, I've made a preset to distribute matrices or vectors in a sphere. There was one person asking me whether it's like voxelism, remarching, and so on. Uh, I'm not familiar with these terms, but the thing that I can say is that we can surely distribute all these things within a volume as well. So for demonstration purposes, I made this voxel monkey. Today, this is not to build the preset, because I think it puts a lot of stress on your machine, but surely you can convert that to a preset using the method I showed you last time and so on. Um, but today, again, this is simply to show you how to make this one because I think this is interesting somehow. So let's start. So let's firstly generate a Susan hat. And our Susan hat has some issues. Uh, is that you can actually see there is a gap between eyes and the meshes. So, and it will cause a wrong calculation of its bounding box in that case. So let's hit L and delete the faces. And I'm going to basically do the other ones, delete the faces. So I'm just going to fill the eyes for, instead of spending too much time to fix our Susan head. Next step is simply just to start what we have done in the past. So let's firstly distribute the matrices and then let's take an integer input. Put the divisions like a, a 10. So we are generating 100 factors already. Actually 1000. Yeah, it's 1000. And you can also observe our vectors being generated. So now this is too much and there is an offset. So let's activate the Z. And I'm going to take a float input and a control width length height just to make it uh, as big as the ours that had. And you can even increase that to 15, something like that. But really be careful at these steps. Okay. Next step is we're going to filter out uh, the vectors. So let's take a uh, is this inside the volume and the mask list. I'm going to hit this, uh, select this node, hit W, goes to data inputs, and the source goes to the objects. So we generate a bounding box with our Suzanne head, and the vectors goes into the place. So what it does, I think, is you use BVH to generate the bounding box, and you see whether this vector is inside this bounding box or not. So it generates a is inside the volume, and basically we're masking out the points which is outside the volume. So initially we have about one thousand factor, uh, yeah, three thousand three hundred seventy five vectors. But now this is just a uh, one tenth of the entire whole thing. And you can definitely just uh, decrease, uh, you can even increase that further and so on to generate more matches and whatever. One thing you, however, is you need to realize is now we have 1000 vectors. And the, if each vector will be an instance of like the, let's generate a cube. And let's go to edit mode, just to shrink its size. I think, uh, yeah, uh, probably even smaller, like this size. Then we're generating like a we are quadruple amount of these vertices. And for my computers, actually not a quadruple, it's eight times our vertices. So we're going to hit like 10,000 vertices. I don't know about the setup of your computer, but my computer is really, really poor. Actually, it's not even a computer, it's a laptop. So I'm not going to instance 1,000 cubes. My computer will explode. So instead, we're going to even decrease this number. You can either decrease from here, or there is another way. Uh, there are actually multiple ways. For example, I use the point distance for to, to uh, eliminate the uh, center vectors. But there is actually an easy way. Because maybe sometimes you're doing things with a human models where you don't have a spherical fall. So in this case, I'm just going to use the solidify. And you can just generate the solidify. And you can either 
goes negative or even positive, it does not really matter. The whole point is you're, I, I would like to have a thickness of this entire mesh. And the BVH tree will automatically calculate all this modifier. And now it does nothing occurs. But uh, uh, if you change the frame number, then everything will occur. The reason is that I'm hitting this always off so that it does not burn my pool computers. There's also other way to work with this. For example, let's just take a uh, object attributes output. Let's just select our Susan head. And then let's take the, let's right click and copy the data path. So now we take a float input. And put the object into object. So now we're using animation node to control these values. And because this is a value within the animation node, then if the property has been changed, then the, all the things has been updated in real time. So this is just a kind of trick. So now you can just uh, easily increase or decrease its thickness so that more points or less points being generated are being masked out uh, from this mask list. So 300 list, so let's just take a try. Object instancer and object metrics output. Actually, uh, I think this is okay. So let's instance our cubes. Yeah, I think this is okay. Then let's take a so let's use the object to transform out. Transform output. And as mentioned in the past, to get a proper orientation, let's get a direction to rotation. So now we get our voxel mesh being done. So let's hide the 3D viewer and hide our Sudan head. And basically we get the things worked out. And definitely you can change the number just to be aware with the distance. You can even go negative or positive. So you generate the Susan heads. I think this is kind of nice. And you can observe the thickness. Like there are more mesh generated there and there. So you can see a thickness. You can also increase the count of course. So let's take a 25. Then you also instance a lot of points within a limited thickness. These are all things that you can potentially do. And let's take a vector from values. So let's decrease our the size of our spheres, like a half. I think this is already cool. And then you can put a light within this mesh and so on. I think this is good enough. So this, this is just a for fun. Uh, but I think this is kind of cool once you have the lighting inside. So let's just uh, do this very quick. Then you get something kind of cool, interesting. You can definitely turn down the bloom radius. And let's go see in the shader and turn down the word. So something cool occurs. So you can definitely play around with this entire thing. I think I think it's kind of cool, interesting to actually look at. Changing the lights 300. So this is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.